from a fallout shelter in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. That is good weed. That is good weed. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues to you. Really care about the different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 8. Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. There we are together again on the radio. In this hour, our guest files lawsuits regarding obesity. His own website says he's using legal action to help fight obesity. Now, uh, I don't think you need legal action at all. You want to fight obesity? I've got the solution. You will save a lot of money in legal fees. Are you ready? Here is how you help fight obesity. Take the fork out of your mouth. That's how you do it. Or in the case of fast food joints, take the spork out of your mouth. You know what I mean. But our guest believes legal action is the way to fight obesity. His name is Professor John Banshaf the third is a professor of public interest law at the George Washington University Law School in Washington, DC. Professor Banshaf, thank you for joining us. Yeah, good 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 afternoon, Tom. Uh let me just correct you a little bit. I haven't filed those lawsuits. I inspired a number of them. I worked on a number of them, but I'm not actually the attorney bringing them, and we're bringing them for the same reason we brought a whole bunch of lawsuits against the problem of smoking, and that is the activity smoking and obesity are costing the American public over 100 billion dollars a year. Your remedy of stop eating or presumably stop smoking sounds nice in theory, but obviously it isn't working. So the lawsuits are going forward. Ten out of ten have been successful, so I think we're doing good. Well, you say uh, that the uh, uh, stop smoking idea hasn't worked, but let's face it, less Americans are smoking now than well, ever fact, before. We've cut it about in half, and one of the ways wait, wait, we wait, did wait, that wait, is wait, by wait. bringing a lot of lawsuits. Then, well, wait, what, what makes you think lawsuits help cut down on smoking? Well, I think virtually every report, which wonders how we were able to do it so quickly, says that it was the multi-trillion dollar or multi-billion dollar lawsuits against the tobacco industry. It was legal actions like the ones I brought, which got anti-smoking messages on the air and cigarette commercials off the air, the ones we brought to ban smoking in public places, all of which are having a cumulative impact. And let's talk about obesity for a second. Is there anybody out, let's take the lawsuit uh, just to take one as an example that uh, got a lot of attention. Uh, the lawsuit filed on behalf of teenagers uh, who are getting obese by eating at McDonald's. How is filing a lawsuit going to solve that problem? Well, as a result of lawsuits against McDonald's, they've already made many significant changes. They've changed their menu. They provide more information. They're reducing their calories. They offer uh, lower uh, calorie wait, foods a big, on their does menu. A, wait, wait, wait. Does a Big Mac have less calories now? Does a Big Mac have? No, but they're now serving salads. They're now serving fruits as dessert. Well, it's pretty they well. It's pretty well cal- known. It's pretty well known that people aren't really going to McDonald's for that stuff. I mean, the honest truth is that seems to me McDonald's, uh, in order to counter negative publicity, will uh, put that stuff on the menu. But the real truth is that people go to McDonald's to eat hamburgers. Yeah, so? Or McGriddles. Or chicken. Yeah, well, but, for French but what fries the court sure. is saying, Tom, is that in many cases they don't know which are the most fattening foods. In New York, they are now McDonald's is now required, along with all other fast food companies, to post that information right up on the menu board where people are looking. And by all indications, that is also being successful. But but, but you say this is successful. Let, let me give you an example. I mean, first of all, the best-selling item at McDonald's is a McGriddle. The McGriddle has, if I recall correctly, over a thousand calories. And it is probably one of the most fattening items on the McDonald's menu. It is also 
the most popular new item introduced to McDonald's since the Egg McMuffin. I think you now put in the key word, the most popular new item. But it's the most po one of the most popular items being sold at McDonald's right now. You try, seem to be trying to reason from one example, Tom. Let's talk I'm giving broadly. you an example. I, I, let me give you another example that has nothing to do with McDonald's. Carl's Jr. Here's a place that could care less about your lawsuits. Uh, Carl's Jr. and their, their sibling, Hardee's in the Midwest, uh, sells something called a prime rib burger, where they take a what looks like a half-pound patty, and they top it with what looks like a half-pound of prime rib. And uh, the, the the more outrageous the item, the pastrami burger, the $6 burger, the thick burger at Hardee's, the more outrageous the burger, the better it sounds. Well, again, I'm, I'm not sure what point you're making. If you're saying that there are some people who are selling very fattening foods, the answer is No, no, but, yes. but the, but but the companies are making so money because the public I'm likes it. Why are you worried about it? Well, I'm not worried about anything. I'm simply saying that the, that's what the public goes to a fast food restaurant to get. You don't care that McDonald's has made these changes, that they had to shell out $12.5 million to settle I, our uh, first suit? Yeah, let me let me tell you this. Um, if I'm not a McDonald's shareholder, but if I were, I'd just be angry because th this is just increasing their cost of doing business. It hasn't changed the way people eat. It changes the way McDonald's does business, and that is changing the way people eat because McDonald's is selling far more salads than it did when we started this because they weren't selling any salads when we started it. They are selling far more desserts, which are healthful for you because they weren't selling any healthful desserts. And you can cite one or two examples of situations where fattening things are still being sold. But I, I see no, I see, I see no evidence. I see no evidence that McDonald's has fruit flying out the door like there's no tomorrow. I'll give you a very positive example. You can be quiet for just a minute if you well, take first of all, first of all, let's, start, let's set some ground rules here. Let's set some ground rules here. I am the host of this show, okay? We're going to have a give and take here, but I'm not going to tell you to keep quiet, and you're not going to tell me to keep quiet, okay? All right? Well, you turned off my mic. Well, yes, I did while I let you know, and I was admonishing you not to tell me to be quiet on my own program. Well, I'm saying if you want me to give you information... But we will get to the information. The information will unfold as we go, but you don't tell me to keep quiet on my own program. Do it, sir. All right, go and ahead. Would you like a specific example? Yes, go ahead. All right. The federal judge before whom that suit you talked about was brought characterized the McDonald's Chicken McNuggets as a McFrankenstein creation. Those are his words because of misrepresentation as to the amount of fat and calories in it. As a direct result of that, McDonald's has reduced it. You probably saw the movie in which I was I played a major role, which is Super Size Me. As a direct result of that movie, McDonald's no longer has Super Sizing. Now, those are two concrete examples, and you can cite your fat burger. Well, that movie is not a lawsuit. It's really a movie. Well, first of all, the movie is not a lawsuit. It's a movie. The person made the but movie. It was based on a lawsuit, as you probably know if you saw it. Well, it was based on a lot of things. It was mostly based on Morgan Spurlock's curiosity about McDonald's. Which was inspired by the lawsuit that my law, my law students and I brought, and which has been upheld by four judges so far. You have to understand, and I, I, by the way, we'll take some phone calls this hour, and the average person does not believe that these lawsuits are solving anything. Because I think the average person is well aware of what kind of food is sold at fast food places. Well, again, you may be right, but the answer is not whether the average person or the people who listen to your show believe they are. The question is, are we winning the lawsuits? The answer is yes. Are they having positive results? The answer is yes. Now, I would With like to see, I, you know smoking, what, I, I want to say, we'll get to smoking years. in a second. I, 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 I would like to see empirical evidence of what you just claimed. Stop interrupting. But I would like to see empirical evidence. If you've got empirical evidence that eating habits have changed, I'd like to see it. Well, the very fact that McDonald's is selling so no, many no, more no. salads. The, well, we, first of all, you don't even know how many salads they are or aren't selling. They're just I selling. I know they're selling more salads than they did when we started because they weren't selling any oh, salads. Oh, right. So that, that, could be, that, could, that could be one salad. Uh, then uh, That would be 100% increase. Millions of salads. Millions. millions of salads. Mm -hmm. They do publish their results. They are available. And that doesn't mean that these are the same people who are putting down hamburgers to eat salads. They could be people who are eating salads at Wendy's who now are eating them at McDonald's. You, have, you, you say people are eating better. The obesity rate in this country, for all the years you've been doing this, is the highest it's ever been. Where is where it is, going, Tom? Where is the... Where is it going, Tom? Have you looked it up? Where is what going? 
The rate. You're talking about the rate. I'm asking if you're aware of what's happening. I just the rate. read that now one out of three Americans is obese. Tom, I'm asking if you're very aware of the rate. I, I don't. I, again, I read a the million. Is you're not. You don't know. Well, so let's you, hear the, the Let's hear the empirical. The years and is now finally slowing down. Isn't that so? It's slowing down means it's still going up, right? That's right. It doesn't happen immediately, just as so with smoking. So it's still going it's up. years with smoking, but we're winning on smoking. We've done that for 20 years. We're now using the same tactic on obesity. And whether you like it or not, it's working. It worked very well with smoking. It's beginning to work with obesity. Well, it's not a matter of whether I like it. I, I know when I go to KFC, guess what? The FC in KFC stands for fried chicken. I know what I'm getting when I go to KFC. Did you read about the lawsuit against KFC? Uh, I'm sure there is one. Well, it was brought, and as a result, KFC has now switched their cooking oils. They virtually eliminated trans fat. They've reduced the amount of fat in some of their food. So you're as saying a result it's of a threat of a now, now it's healthy fried chicken. It is healthy fried chicken. It is less hazardous fried chicken. But it's fried chicken, which is still not the healthiest food in the world. It's not healthy at all. I don't know what point you're making, so I can't respond the, to the that. The point I'm making to you is this is not you're not turning fast food into health food. The people are still going in there and they are eating food that is high in fat, high in saturated fat. Uh, maybe it has less trans fat. Okay, I'll buy that. But the fact is, it is still not healthy food. And when people go to eat at a place like this, they're going for a treat. They are not going in there to eat health food. Well, actually, that's wrong. Also, how so? Surveys show that about approximately 40% of the people eating McDonald's eat there five or more times a week. So it's not that they go in there for a treatment. Are they eating? Go in there every day. Do they? Are they no, eating? We are they, to, we are they, are make, they eating as part of like the, this is their training table while they're working out? You can't learn anything if you keep uh, yeah, no, no, stepping on. We have an entire we have an entire hour to have a conversation here, okay. and it's going to be a give and take. And yeah, again, I tell you, I'm going to interrupt you many times, and there'll be some times when you'll interrupt me, and that's how it works. No, I try not to interrupt. This you, is not a college. This is not a college. This question. is not a law school. This is not a college classroom. This is a radio program. You got it. That's how they're done. Okay. All right. When I'm in your classroom, I will sit quietly and take notes. That's not what we're doing here. Okay, but you were talking before about the rate of obesity, and apparently you don't know what's happening with the rate of obesity. And the answer is it was accelerating. It is now going down. The rate of acceleration the is rate going of down, meaning it's still going up. Expect during the first couple of years of this. Remember, it took us over thirty years of suing in tobacco before we started winning billion dollar cases. Here, we've only been doing this for three or four years. By the way, I we've must say, won 10, ten of these suits have been I, successful. And by the way, I also don't agree about tobacco suits, and I don't own stock in tobacco companies or anything of the kind. Tobacco companies clearly are not our advertisers, uh, so I, I have no vested interest in saying this. Forty years ago, uh, but I but I got him off the air, Tom. I uh, know all about it. Well, I, you may have done that, exerting pressure. But I, I, again, what I say is, I think people know by now about the Surgeon General's report of 1964. I think people know that smoking is unhealthy, and those who engage in that habit are killing themselves, and they know it. Well, interestingly enough, again, you're wrong. Surveys show, for example, that over 60 percent of smokers don't know that smoking causes heart attacks. So they think it's healthy smoking. I didn't say it was healthy. They are not fully aware of the risks of smoking, which is one of the reasons why these lawsuits and the increased taxes and restricting smoking in public places is so successful in getting people to stop or not to start smoking. And now we're doing the same thing with regard to obesity. And again, whether you like it or not, understand it or not, or have studied it or not, uh, we're winning. I think that's the bottom line. We'll take a break, and we'll take your phone calls for our guest, Professor John F. Banzaf III. He is a professor of public interest law at the George Washington University Law School in Washington, D.C., and he believes the way to fight smoking, the way to fight obesity, is through lawsuits. What do you think? Tom like it. Who's that? 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Like it. Tom, I've never... I mean, I've said this a couple times to get laid, but I'm saying this right now, and I mean it. I love you, Tom. The Tom like it Show. This is the Tom like it Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. And we go to your calls now from Professor John Banza of George Washington University Law School in Washington, D.C. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's start with Morgan. Morgan, you're on the Tom Likas Show with Professor Banza. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay. How you doing, John? 
I'm doing fine. Go ahead, Morgan. I'm doing pretty good myself. Um, I'm actually having a cigarette right now, but honestly, I'm not going to sue a tobacco company if I get, you know, lung cancer. If I get in a car crash, I'm not going to sue Toyota. So why sue McDonald's because it's making people fat? I mean, you're living in a country where, you know, what, 75% of the people are just retarded? Uh, and you're going to sue them because people are just shoving the junk down their face? And now that they serve salads that have more sugar than a two-liter soda, that's that's okay? You ask why, why we sue them? The answer is, first of all, they're doing something legally wrong. Under the law, they can be held accountable. They have, in fact, be, are in the process of being held accountable. And the evidence indicates, although it's not conclusive yet, that these suits work to reduce smoking and probably to reduce obesity. Those are three reasons why we bring them. You don't want to bring a suit? That's your business. Well, yeah, but, you know, didn't you ever hear about, like, personal responsibility? I mean, you're talking about KFC. I mean, the chicken is gray. I mean, I personally have not eaten at McDonald's in 10 years, probably 15 years for KFC myself. I mean... You know, why don't you maybe sue them for, I don't know, their research into genetic modification or, um, I don't know, I don't know, chopping into the rainforest for, you know, grazing land for cows or, oh, I don't know, just the, you know, what, it's all right just because they take a freaking supersize off the menu, apparently. I mean, it just seems like, you know, you you watched the movie Super Size Me and then all of a sudden it, it just you know, went off on a freaking bandwagon for the wrong reasons, just because it's making people fat. You know what? I can eat in my own house and get fat. You know, that doesn't mean I'm going to. It's all about personal responsibility. And let me give you a very simple answer. Under modern law, where problems occur, the courts usually find that there is a balance between personal responsibility and corporate responsibility, and then they hold the corporation liable for that reasonable portion of their responsibility. That's what's happening in the cigarette suits. It's what's likely to happen with regard to the obesity suits. That comes down to personal responsibility just as much as anything else, though, the the lawsuits I'm talking about here. I mean, just because I can pick up a gun and go shoot someone in the face doesn't mean I'm going to, because... I mean, that's personal responsibility. I can do it, but I'm not going to do it. And honestly, suing a freaking corporation because it makes people fat, because the people eat it, buy it, and like it, you know, I mean, yeah, sure, I'll give you that it's addictive. I mean, that's that's pretty much no question. You eat fast food five days a week like apparently most of the, uh, you know, McDonald's consumers do. I mean, yeah. It's it's highly addictive, loaded with sugars. I mean, you know, they give you uh, one gallon sodas with freaking loaded with caffeine. Of course, things like that are addictive. But you know what? So are cigarettes. People know this before they smoke. You know, and just because people don't know that McDonald's is bad for you, that that means it, it, it's worthy of a lawsuit. Well, Morgan, all those arguments are interesting. The courts have uniformly rejected them. And if you believe fast foods are addictive, then probably fast food companies should be putting that information and warning you about it. Well, yeah, but don't you think it kind of impedes more upon people's personal right? To tell uh, people know, what they're what getting? They no, I, sir, what they I don't want, think when it... They want. Sir, I don't think it impedes on anybody's rights to tell them that something is addictive if they're not aware of it, to tell them how much fat and calories are in it. Indeed, I think if you want to say that people should exercise personal responsibility, you have to give them the information necessary to do that. And we know that most people have no idea. In fact, let me ask you something. I'm going to th- mention three products. You tell me which has the most, which has the least fat and, and calories. One would be the traditional McDonald's cheeseburger. A second would be their uh, chicken McNuggets. Third would be their fish. Um, I would imagine probably their fish, but I, I couldn't say I'm not a McDonald's well, expert. There's the I problem, haven't eaten there in 10 years. Complete, you're completely wrong, and a lot of other people are wrong. And because they don't have that information, it's hard to say they should exercise personal responsibility. McDonald's has the information. In New York, they're now being required to post that information. And presumably, although there'll be some people who will pig out no matter what information they get, and some who will always find that information by diligently searching the Internet, there are a hell of a lot of people in between that who when they look up and it says meal number 10 has 1500 calories they may decide well gee maybe i'll get meal number one instead that seems to be happening 
that's, again, where it comes down to personal responsibility because, you know, look at it. You're saying, you know, they can go find the nutritional information anytime they want, anywhere they want. And, you know, in California, you know, you go into any place and you can find the nutritional information if you really need it. But the fact is people don't. You're living in a country where people don't read. People watch TV constantly, suck down sodas, suck down beer, suck down their cigarettes. They don't care. They don't care, and that is the that right there is the problem with the corporations, the people, the consumers. It's not the corporation itself. I mean, like I said, I you've made the, the same argument the three case, different but... times, and the courts have rejected that same argument. Do you have anything else you have to say? Anything novel which hasn't come up already? Uh, yeah, see, that's the thing, though. They rejected that argument, which is a perfectly valid argument, which, you know, honestly, I, I really think personally it's crap, don't think sir, it should have. And they've rejected it. Hey, if you're not going to let me talk, so you can you go know, on come from on. There. You're sitting here on the air accepting calls, at least hear my argument. Come on. I mean, seriously. All right, well, we're going to move on, but I thank you for that. Let's go to Ben on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Ben. How are you today? Great. Can you get off the speakerphone? Uh, no, I don't have an earpiece. Sorry. All right. Sounds awful. Go ahead. Okay. I just want to say I agree with Morgan. I think this country is getting too ridiculous with these lawsuits. People need to take personal responsibility. I was at a point where I was eating McDonald's five, six times a week. Not necessarily McDonald's, but other fast food restaurants. I have never been obese because I exercise. I take care of myself. Okay, yeah, I did eat fast food, which isn't the best thing. But people need to take responsibility. It's not just the food. It's the fact that they don't do anything. They sit on their rear ends all day doing nothing. Again, Ben, it's a great argument. Your friend just made it for about five minutes. Courts are uniformly rejecting it. What they are saying is in most situations where people are smoking, people are obese, people don't use products as carefully as they should, that along with personal responsibility goes corporate responsibility and corporations which misrepresent their products, fail to disclose information about their products or do other things which are illegal like false advertising, deserve to pay their fair share, and that's what's happening. Should KFC and Coca-Cola reveal their secret formulas? No, of course not. Why not? Because they're probably trade secrets, but I think they should be required. And indeed, in New York, they are now required to reveal their calories and probably will soon be required to reveal the fat content. Allison on the Tom Likas Show for our guest, Professor John Bansaf. Hello. Hello. How are you? Great. Hey, listen, um, John, who appointed you the health police? Well, that's a kind of a dumb question. I'm not the health police. I'm using legal action in order to fight first the problem of smoking and then the problem of obesity, and they seem to be working. Nobody okay, elected me. I have no special powers. I am not a, an official of the court or the government. I cannot pass any regulations, so I don't have to be elected. All I have to do is be effective, and I am very effective, and that seems to be what's getting everybody upset. It seems to me that you're being a little bit greedy. You're kind of setting yourself in a stereotypical California Sioux type. Um, you know, you well, really you know, don't I'm need... i California. I'm at the other end of the country, so... Oh, well, then I guess it goes for all over the place. You know, everybody, I guess, is pretty Sioux happy, and it's kind of ridiculous that you feel that you need to impede in other people's lives and you know besides well not. that's not what i wanted to say anyways okay. what i wanted to say was these people that you're talking about about mcdonald's or whatever their menus changing the people that go there they're still eating the same thing the only difference is new people that actually know how to eat healthy go there and they get the healthy things see the only thing they don't know is that those healthy things are still bad for you because there's preservatives if you want to eat healthy Go to the freaking grocery store, buy some fresh vegetables, buy some raw, buy some meat, you know, cook it yourself. Well, first of all, ma'am, we do know that people's uh, eating habits at McDonald's and elsewhere are changing. Secondly, the reason we're doing this is that the impact of overeating is not felt just by the people who are overeat or their families. It costs the American public over $117 billion a year, which means that all the people eat. who are not obese are paying more in taxes and much more in health insurance. Therefore, it impacts everybody just as smoking did. Are you a lawyer? Of course I'm a lawyer. Oh, you totally fit the description. You just won't let anybody else talk. Listen, okay? Are you ready to listen? Sure. If you have something intelligent to say and you're aware of your facts, I'll be happy to listen. Go ahead. 
Of course I'm aware of my facts. Now listen, those people, how can you prove that those people that go to McDonald's on a daily basis have changed their appetite? Because McDonald's regularly does surveys and other people do surveys and we are aware McDonald's of the changes. Do a survey. Ms. That's crap. If you ask a question, I gotta be able to answer it. But it's the but it's a lie. Are you aware of marketing surveys regarding fast food? How often do you check them, ma'am? Um, See, I check them very frequently because that's my job, but you don't check them so you don't know what they are. Okay, well, listen, people going to McDonald's are not changing their appetite. It's more people going for the actual good food, which they're going to go work off. You have to be aware of what you're eating. These people are aware of what they're eating, and they do it anyways. You want to know why? Because they like it. The they're going to keep they're doing not, it. I Even though I'm a smoker, phone, I know, know that smoking causes heart attacks. Can't, you know, actually, they've proven that it doesn't necessarily cause cancer. Cancer is in everybody's blood and their bones and everything when they are born. It's a matter of immune system. Uh, how do you know these people that are going to McDonald's aren't eating healthy foods from McDonald's, yet they have maybe a thyroid problem that creates the problem for them to not be able to maybe metabolize the food fast enough? How do you know that there's not personal interferences causing these people to be obese? It's not just because of the food that they're eating. I'm sorry. Most of what you're saying doesn't make any sense to me, so I have no answer for it. How do you know these people that are eating at McDonald's don't have personal issues with their systems, such as thyroid and metabolism? Well, probably, obviously, many of them do. We have statistics on how many of them do. But overall, we, we are reasonably sure, based upon many published studies, that fast food is probably, and the spread of the fast food companies is probably the major cause of the sudden epidemic of obesity that we've had in the last 25 years. We have not had a sudden breakdown in thyroid problems. We have not had sudden increases in underlying diseases. So most of the studies say 50 to 75% of the cause is the fast food company with their ubiquitous advertising and supersizing and so on, and that's why we're fighting them. But, of course, uh, we're doing more than that. We're fighting the uh, sale of sugary soft drinks in schools successfully. As I say, we got KFC to modify some of their foods. Uh, Kellogg Company has modified their foods and has modified their advertising directed to kids. So it's working. So you sue all the major fast food places? No. No, we're getting to it. Why, why do you sue some and not others? Well, some of it is strategy. The other is McDonald's is the biggest and therefore tends to be the trendsetter. And in fact, uh, many of these other companies have made significant changes. And when you read articles about it, even in places like the Wall Street Journal, which doesn't like these suits any more than you do, they say a major factor behind all these changes is not anything Congress is doing, is not a sudden attack of conscience, but it is the lawsuits, the threat of lawsuits, and the publicity of lawsuits. I, I think the average consumer in the middle of a recession right now uh, probably doesn't like these lawsuits because it increases the cost of, of buying uh, the, the products they like to eat. Well, you're wrong on that unless you've got some documentation for it. I'm guessing. Uh, well, you you're think, wrong. So you think the average person is happy that the companies have to incur this expense and then they, in some cases, probably have to pass it on to the consumer. You think people like that? Actually, Tom, what happened is that when McDonald's was forced to start selling salads, they found they were more profitable than hamburgers because basically you throw a bunch of lettuce in a bowl and sell it to people for what you had to pay for a hamburger before. So they're making more money from it. And we are, if you want to go in economic terms or uh, capitalistic terms, we are imposing upon them the cost that they are now imposing on us. It's called internalizing the costs. They make changes in their pricing decisions, and uh, we have a healthier America. We are talking with Professor John F. Banshaft the third. He is a professor of public interest law. He's at George Washington University Law School in Washington, D.C. It is his belief that the best way to fight smoking and fight obesity is to file lawsuits against the companies that provide cigarettes, the companies that provide your favorite fast food. So what I want to find out from you at 1-800-5800-TOM is this. Do you think lawsuits are the best way to fight these problems? 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Like it. Your show is what all men need. I mean, we we need to get put up on game, and you do a great job with that. The Tom Likey Show.
From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likens at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Our guest, Professor John Banzap, is behind a number of lawsuits regarding smoking and obesity. Let's say hello here to Keith in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likens Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how we doing? I'm doing okay. Well, first, I, after hearing all these other goofballs out there, I, I want to say first that I totally agree with the fact that obesity and smoking is costing healthy, non-smoking Americans billions of dollars. And quite frankly, I'm tired of putting the bill for all of these people who don't have it in them. Well, I don't think you should be footing the bill. I think uh, obese people and smokers should pay way more for health insurance, and that's that. I agree 100%. The and then that solves the problem. Is, Exactly. The other thing I want to say is that the professor is spot on with his facts. He obviously is uh, well-versed in the topic, and uh, the other listeners and callers and yourself are not giving him the respect that he's due for being knowledgeable on this subject, and people keep throwing out opinion and comparing it to fact that he's presenting. The man knows his topic, and I think people ought to give them a little bit more air. Well, I, some it. things the professor is stating are facts, some are opinions, and and some are, uh, you know, we don't really know what the evidence is. He may have it or he may not, but he says he does. Well, when somebody challenges him based on what they think or what they feel and they have no fact to back it well, up. I, I, for example, I have not seen evidence that McDonald's is selling so many salads or that it's been such a screaming success. I don't see it. Well, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, but you, know, you, but you, give, you give him the benefit of the doubt, but not the caller. Well, the caller is stating an opinion, which is well, not... Well, we don't know. We facts. don't know if the professor is stating an opinion until we see the facts, do we? Well, uh, I suppose. Um, you suppose? Professor, professor, got a question for you, sir. Uh, do you see in the, uh, in the realm of smoking, do you see that the lawsuits that have been brought are actually reducing... The number of cigarettes that are sold versus the uh, general news about the uh, the bad effects of smoking. Uh, there are dozens of well-published studies which show, first of all, that smoking is going down in terms of total number of cigarettes sold, or more importantly, per capita, or the percentage of people who are smokers. In most cases, they attribute it primarily to, A, the bans on smoking in public places, which make it more difficult to smoke and send a negative message. Secondly, the dramatic increase in taxes on cigarettes. Third is the increase in price on cigarettes brought about as a result of the lawsuits. And probably fourth at this point is the education educational programs. By the way, here's an area where I think we all agree because uh Tom, I was the guy who brought the legal action, which resulted in a in two governmental decisions, which now do require do permit I shouldn't say require, but permit insurance companies to charge smokers and the obese more. Prior to that, they could not do so. But unfortunately, that is only a small part of the total cost. And even if every company did that. The people who are non-smokers, the people who are not obese, are still paying far more in taxes and in other forms because of these two problems. Oh, I, I, I definitely think the obese and the smokers uh, should pay the maximum amount. And, and frankly, I think if they paid the actual cost of their insurance, that would result in a lessening of obesity and smoking far more than any other effort anyone could make. Now, and by the way, Professor, I don't disagree with every uh, every initiative you've had. I don't think people should be smoking in public buildings. I don't think they should be smoking in elevators. Uh, I mean, there's a number of things I agree with. I just think sometimes that suing fast food places because they sell uh, fat-laden fast food to the average person, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it may be, Tom, be bear in mind, of course. The point is that it seems like the point that the professor's making is not that they are selling it, but that they are being forthright with the information and posting it. But, at but the the, it's, it's like we don't know that. I mean, I don't have to know the exact number of calories, the exact number of grams of fat, to know that most fast food is not health food. It's not. 
All right, so I'm the true, reason but, most but you... people don't support these is I think they don't really understand the legal theories behind them. And again, it's not a question of knowing the exact calories. It was just five or ten minutes ago. One of your vehement callers, I asked him if he knew even which one was the, the healthiest, which one was the least healthy, and he, like millions of Americans, gets it wrong. Now, you can't exercise personal responsibility if millions of Americans are going in there and they think that A is a lot healthier than B, whereas the reverse is true. And again, your caller is exactly right. We're not suing them for selling the foods. We are suing them for misrepresenting the foods. We are suing them because they are not providing proper disclosure. We are suing them because they are not providing proper warnings. Those are legal wrongs. You do a legal wrong, I, I, then you can be but, required but to pay. Not revealing information is one thing. Uh, for example, there is one brand of soda out there, and I've talked about this on the air before. There's a brand of soda that has recently relaunched uh, itself as all-natural. And then when you, it's a lemon and lime soda, and I'm not going to get into the brand name here uh, for the purposes of the program, but it's an all, it's an all natural product, it says. And then when you read the label, it says contains no lemon or lime. How can it be all natural, lemon and lime soda, if it doesn't contain lemon and lime? I'm not sure, but that's exactly the same kind of suit that started this all off when McDonald's claimed that their French fries were cooked in 100% pure vegetable oil, which is technically true. What they didn't tell you is it was pre-cooked in beef fat. The suit was brought, put together by my law students, McDonald's, and a lot of the commentators, and probably a lot of talk shows said that was a crazy lawsuit. McDonald didn't think so. They wouldn't even face us in court. They settled. They gave $12.5 million. They now disclose the information on their website, and they apologize. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Stephen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Stephen. Uh, I was just, uh, I had a question for Professor Delusion over there. Um, have you actually looked at the calorie content and the fat content of these salads that McDonald's is serving? Yes, I have, and one of the problems is, is, as you probably know, that while some of them are healthier, some of them are laden with calories, and the problem right now is that people going in can't tell, which is why we are working to require, as we did in New York, that the actual calorie content be put right up there on the menu board so you will know salad A is good for you, at least has lower calories, and salad B is worse than the cheeseburger. That's exactly what I'm fighting for. If there's Thanks anybody out there, side. by the way, if anybody out there thinks Thousand Island dressing is health food, please see me after the program. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Here's Jack on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's a priv it's a privilege to speak to you. <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad you recognize that. Well, hey, I I just want to remind all your listeners of something that George Carlin told us, and it's that in America we don't have any rights; we have privileges. And we got to hold on to our privileges. I look at this man, and I think he's nothing more than a vulture trying to pick at a free meal himself. And I don't appreciate him picking at my privileges as a consumer in a capitalist country. And that's really all I have to say. Well, once again, I think you're wrong. In fact, I know you're wrong because I teach the subject. In this country, we have rights and privileges and freedoms and immunities, and each one is slightly different. And you have to distinguish the one from the other. It's a little bit difficult to understand, and we can't go into it on the phone right now. But George, George Carlin is not always right. You do have certain rights. In fact, you have many rights as an American. All right, Jack, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. How are you? Doing great, son. Hey, I uh, don't got a lot to say. I just, for one, I know what this guy's argument is. He said it to, like, the last five people have called in, so it's like a broken record at this point. I know the corporations, by law, have responsibilities they got to cover. I think it's BS, to be honest with you, because if you don't know if you're going into a, into a Burger King, that you're not going to try to, you know, get something fattening for you. I mean, who, who doesn't know that? And that's just my opinion. So, Professor, I don't have any facts for you that I can ramble off like you were doing. But personally, the difference is that right. I do have the facts. We do have the studies. I can uh, right. either I cite you. I can either so. cite you to the to the articles, or I can just send you to my website, which is bansaf.net, and you'll find a lot of the articles and a lot of studies still up there. Okay, sir, I un I understand you have the statistics and everything. What I what I don't understand is why is all this money being put in this crap anyway? If I want to smoke a cigarette and go out and drink a beer and have a burger. I'm going to go do it. I hope it kills me early. This freaking planet is way too overpopulated anyway. Why are we interested in trying to save everyone at this point? Are you kidding? 
Sir, that's the dumbest uh, argument I've heard all night, so I won't bother responding to it. No, all right, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Russ with a good question on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, I just want to know um, where did the twelve and a half million go, and who's in charge of spending it? Okay, the twelve and a half million dollars, almost all of it went to various public interest organizations. Public and that was order. That was per order of the court after a lot of legal proceeding. All right, on. And um, is, is that information available somewhere? I mean, we can look at it on the web, maybe. I assume it's there. I've never looked for it because I wasn't interested in it. I didn't get any money out of it, but I know there's a long court proceeding, and they just divided it among a variety of public interest organizations. You, you've honestly not made any money at all throughout these lawsuits. No, sir. As I said before, I haven't even brought these uh, obesity lawsuits. I inspire them. I work with the attorneys who bring them, but I don't make money from them, no. Well, c congratulations. Thank you for serving our country. Um, possibly there's a position for you in our government. All right, Russ. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Marcus on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hey, hey Tom. How you doing? Uh, long time, first time. Sure. Hello. Um, okay, my question for the professor is, um, when is the alcohol industry on the list next? Because basically it comes down to choice and um, uh, people's basically abusing, uh, people abusing the fact that, you know, yeah, it's addictive, it tastes good. I eat every once in a while, I don't have a problem. So when, when are we going to start seeing these non-alcoholic, you know, beverages like I mean, beer, wine? Is that on the list next? Because you, you're distorting somewhat on my line, at least. Uh, you seem to be talking about alcohol. That's something I don't know very much about, so I don't comment on it. I see, but you do understand that it's basically the same thing. You, uh, people can uh, enjoy a drink or two, it's fine, uh, but when they start abusing it, it's a problem. So it comes down to my right, my choice, uh, my right to choose uh, what I'm going to eat. If I feel like eating cardboard, why is that a problem? I don't understand. Uh, the fuss about it. Okay, sir, there are similarities between overeating, smoking, and alcohol. There are also differences. Again, nobody is trying to say that you shouldn't be able to eat what you want. Uh, the thrust we're trying to do is say right here is that you should have the information necessary to make that choice. And we're out of time. Professor John Banzhaf. The Tom Likas Show.